to support this channel and its efforts to continue providing quality and accessible music education content, please consider donating to the links in the description or in the pinned comment. Thank you. She's hailed as one of the greatest and most influential singers of all time. She's more than earned her title as the Queen of Gospel. Mahalia Jackson was born in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1911. She started singing at the age of four. Her musical influences were the big voice belting blues singer Bessie Smith and while Jackson herself was raised of the Baptist denomination, she drew inspiration from the sounds of the Pentecostal church. In the black community, the Pentecostal church is known for its loud and charismatic expressions of praise and worship. So from an early age, Mahalia's ear was drawn to big and powerful sounds for which she will eventually become known for. Before something can be accepted, it first has to be rejected. Jackson's big sound was rejected by many in the music community. In the late 1920s, Jackson would move to Chicago and enroll in voice lessons with black operatic tenor, Professor Dubois. And when she sang, he told her, you've got to stop all that hollering. The way you sing is not a credit to the Negro race. You've got to sing so those white people will understand you. The idea that Jackson sang too loud is rooted in white supremacy. When Europeans enslaved Africans, their write-ups of them depicted them as loud, unruly, and savages. Jackson is the granddaughter of former slaves. She's a part of a particular generation of black people post-slavery that was adamant about assimilating to white culture. And part of that assimilation meant being quiet because it was believed that black folk should be seen and not heard. Despite the disapproval of her peers, Jackson maintained her style of singing and in 1948 would have her big break when she releases Move On Up A Little Higher. Then I'm gonna move on up a little higher, yes. I've got to move on up a little higher. Move On Up A Little Higher will reach number two on the Billboard charts and sell over eight million copies, establishing her not only as the Queen of Gospel, but the first Lady of Gospel. She will be the first artist to ever receive a Grammy Award for gospel music. The success of Move On Up A Little Higher will make Mahalia an international superstar amongst black and white audiences, and soon she was performing in the most prestigious music halls, such as Carnegie Halls. Critics consistently praised the sheer size and power of her voice, with many noting, this is a voice that belongs in the opera. She would even get offers to sing opera, to which she replied, I don't sing opera, honey. Jackson's singing and musical style are a testament to the overlap between opera and gospel. <laughs> At this time, black religious music was most associated with spirituals, and spirituals were most popular amongst black classical singers. The early part of Jackson's career, she's compared a lot to classical contralto Marian Anderson because they are singing a lot of the same religious music, such as, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's 
But in Mahalia's rendition, you will hear a rhythm and a bounce that is not present in Anderson's. That's the gospel. Classical singers aren't on the operatic stage. They make their earning singing recitals. A recital is just a voice, piano, and a stage. A Marian Anderson performance was just voice, piano, and the stage. A Mahalia Jackson performance was a voice, piano, and the stage. One of the first things a classical singer learns in training is to stand correctly. An aligned body makes singing so much easier. And you will notice that Mahalia's posture is extremely similar to that of a classical singer. Opera singers are expected to be heard in one, two, three, and four thousand seat venues without a microphone. And they do that by keeping the vocal tract or the throat open throughout the entire range. If you look at Mahilga singing side by side with a classical singer, you'll notice her mouth positioning is nearly identical. Like an opera singer, she keeps her jaw dropped, her lips forward, and her soft palate raised. Outside of her technique, people remarked on how Mahilga had the perfect body for singing. The entire body is a resonator. Mahalia has a wide, or what some people call a barrel, body, so there's a lot of space to fit a lot of sound. These broad body types, like Mahalia, tend to be physically strong by nature, so they don't physically tire out as easily as people with smaller frames. You'll notice this body type is very common in opera because to be able to sing unamplified without a microphone like they do or at times Mahalia requires a great deal of physical strength. Mahalia sings in a 100% pure belt or what some opera singers call an open chest voice. While we're talking about opera singers, it should be noted that opera singers can and do belt. In an interview with Black Music Archive, Grace Bumbry told us that she can take the chest voice all the way up to E above middle C. Major, and I could carry my middle voice up, up to D and E and then down also. But it's not something that I would like to do every day. In an interview with Jerome Hines, Patrice Munsell says, I can belt up to high D above middle C. No higher without a possible heart attack. It requires more physical energy when you belt the whole body is in it. Singing in a pure, raw chest voice has a limit. And that limit seems to be around the C to E range. And while Mahalia didn't do it often, she could take the pure chest voice all the way up to high E. This was a rare occurrence for her because as Munsell and Bumbry mentioned, the sheer physicality to do this is not sustainable. The kind of belting technique that Mahalia or these classical singers use is not the same thing that is being done by pop singers such as Whitney Houston or Patti LaBelle. 
What Jackson and these classical singers do requires a great deal more of physical effort. It was said that at her best, to have the physical strength to perform, Mahalia would need a whole day's rest before going on stage. The success of songs such as Move On Up, How I Got Over, and Come On Children Let's Sing will make Mahalia Jackson a superstar. She starred in movies. Landed her own TV specials and began a successful international touring career. In the midst of all this, she would run into the first of many health challenges when she collapsed on stage and was diagnosed with sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is a rare inflammatory disease in which abnormal masses form on organs in the body. These masses may alter the structure and function of the organs. The most affected organs are generally the lungs. For Mahalia, her lungs and her heart were most impacted. While the illness has no cure, surgery is a common treatment, and after her first surgery, she threw herself right back into work. She continued recording, she continued touring, she published a cookbook, launched a chain of fried chicken restaurants, and added a new title to her name, Activist. Adding to her already busy schedule, Jackson would take a liking to a young preacher by the name of Dr. Martin Luther King. Working with King and sometimes on her own, she would march or give free shows to raise money to support causes to fight against racism. By this point in her career, Jackson's celebrity was so huge. She was selling as many records and made as much money as the best pop singers and was beginning to see the effect of her influence on younger singers such as Aretha Franklin and Tina Turner. Mahalia's style of singing made her voice difficult to categorize. Some say she was a contralto. Some say she was a mezzo-soprano. The easiest way to figure this out will be to look at her music in comparison to the charts for each respective voice type. Mahalia's singing style and song structures did not follow conventional methods found in contemporary or classical music at the time. She rarely used or explored the full extent of her range. When classifying voices, it is not about how high or how low you can sing, but where your power lies. It is where your power lies that is much more important than necessarily your range. It is where you can make your most noise and then the softest, most beautiful sound that carries through a 3000 seat house that matters. The hallmark of Jackson's sound is singing where her power lies. The middle fifth is described as the central notes in the voice. The majority of notes in a vocal composition should lie in the middle fifth to keep the voice in the correct tessitura. The middle fifth comprises the notes of where a singer is most at home and sounds their best. Mahalia's compositions are all arranged sort of similarly, so let's take a look at the vocal arrangement for one of her more popular tunes such as Didn't It Rain. This entire vocal line spans middle C to C above middle C. But the notes she sings the most are B flat and C above middle C. On 
on songs such as Elijah Rock, the line spans low A to C above middle C. But the notes she's hanging on to the most are the A above middle C. And if you're familiar with her work, her favorite note to sing, especially at the end of a song, was the C above middle C. Mahalia's power zone, or the middle fifth, seems to be around F to C above middle C. Looking at the charts, where Mahalia likes to sing is too high for the contralto voice. It's too low for the soprano voice, so she must more than likely be a mezzo-soprano. In classical or contemporary music, it's not uncommon for a singer to utilize two to three octaves for a single performance. The typical Mahalia Jackson performance, she would use an octave and a fifth of voice, less than two octaves. Keeping her singing confined to such a small range is why as Mahalia nears the end of her life, we don't hear an audible drop in the quality of her singing even at her weakest, can still be heard without a microphone. But while we can't hear a difference, we can see a difference. As Patrice Mansoul said, Mahalia's style of belting requires more physical energy because when you belt, the whole body is in it. To sing how Mahalia sings, she needs a strong, healthy body. But as sarcoidosis progresses, it weakens the body and its organs. In her last years, you'll notice due to illness, Mahalia is significantly smaller. And as her body continues to weaken, it's becoming more and more difficult for her to physically support this style of singing. This is most evident on her final tour, where she is prone to nearly collapsing at the end of a performance. Jackson would perform until her body would no longer allow it. After her passing, the legacy of Mahalia Jackson will be continued through her musical children such as Aretha Franklin, Tina Turner, Little Richard, and so many others who will go on to become innovators and pillars within the music industry. Oh, 